we are a part of a larger group called Geo Radar Group, and I'll sort of get into into that a little bit later. But you know, my intention for this presentation was to tell you, you know, it was sort of twofold. One was to hopefully attract some students to come join us over here in uh, in GeoScan Land Surveying, and then maybe a little bit about just like my career path and how you know that you can kind of learn from my experiences to apply it to to your career paths. Um, okay, so yeah, this is today's agenda. We're going to be going, you know, a little brief of introduction and a bit about my, my career path, then a little bit of about geomatics and land surveying in BC. Uh, we'll talk about GeoRadar Group and the services we offer, uh, how GeoScan land surveying came to be, what is an engineering tech's role within the company, and what are some of the things that set GeoRadar Group apart as an employer. And then at the end, we'll have time for questions, should there be any. So on to introductions in my career path. So I am a BCLS. My BCLS number is 992. Uh, when I was a kid in elementary school, my family immigrated from El Salvador to Canada. We arrived in uh, actually in December and it was minus 35 when we arrived. Uh, we lived in uh, Edmonton during the big Oilers dynasty. So I'm a huge Oilers fan. Um, through elementary school, we eventually, our family eventually moved to Lethbridge. So I finished elementary school, junior high, and high school in uh, Lethbridge. I've always been a big fan of of math, sports, outdoors, and art. So that's sort of a little bit about me. After graduating high school, I studied at U of L, majoring in math and fine arts. So at the time, I thought I would probably end up as an architect. Um, but you know, during that time, I attended some of my friends' geography classes, and I started to like them more than my own classes. So I, when I ended up finishing up at U of L, I moved back to Edmonton, just sort of doing you know bartending and that sort of thing. I knew I was going to go back to school, but I wasn't really sure what it was I was going to do. So I did a little bit of research and came up with geomatics uh, because it sort of ticked all the boxes of of, uh, of what I wanted to uh, to to do with my life. Uh, so I enrolled at Lethbridge College. I played soccer there for the Kodiaks and competed in kickboxing out of one of the local gyms, PFA, while I was back there. So uh, once I graduated, I worked in Medicine Hat for Focus. Um, but then I knew I wanted to pursue my professional designation at the time I wanted to be at ALS, but I knew I didn't want to go through the challenging the exam process. So I decided to go to UMB uh, for the Ge Geodesy and Geomatics Engineering program. And I really enjoyed my time at UMB. It was an amazing program. And, you know, in the end, I'm really glad that I did the uh, diploma program out of Lethbridge College along with, uh, with the uh, degree at UMB, I think between the two types of education, you get quite a quite a bit of rounded knowledge. And so I've always really appreciated that, that. So I worked in a variety of locations and variety of companies with like, you know, various structures. You know, they all had their benefits and their drawbacks. Oh. I'll just let this person join. Hello, we have another person in. Ah, there we go. Hi, Jim. Okay, so I'll carry on. So yeah, I worked for Focus in Medicine Hat. 
I eventually also work for a company called Athabascan Resource Company, working up in Fort McMurray. I've worked for McElhaney in Vancouver in a smaller firm called Straight Land Surveying on the Sunshine Coast. And now I am with Geoscan Land Surveying as the division manager. Uh, we have offices in Burnaby and Victoria, land survey offices, that is. The greater company has offices all over. So in all this time, I've had quite the opportunity to work on some very interesting projects, you know, everything from tunneling to mining, hydro right of -ways, deformation monitoring, legal surveys, sort of a little bit of everything. Uh, so at the top there, the photo that was working on a First Nations land settlement claim up on the west coast of Vancouver Island, and I'm set up on a huge tree that's fallen over sideways. Um, it was very difficult terrain to work in, a lot of vegetation, but really interesting work nonetheless. Uh, the other two photos are taken from a job I did along the Alaska and BC border uh, for a, what's called an independent power project. And so that entailed a bunch of right-of-ways and new district lots for different facilities. Um, but I, I needed to tie in evidence from about 1912. So that's an example here on the bottom right of a fallen over post that we found that was buried under about you know 50 centimeters of moss and and earth and then the other is uh, exposing a bearing tree so that you can see the writing on it so that we can uh, confirm uh, and look for actually that's what helped us find that berry or the, that post um, and so while there I, uh, while working on that project I made sure to make some time to get hydrorized so if anyone's been to Hyder, you, you probably know what I'm talking about So now onto a little bit of geomatics and land surveying in BC. So, like I said, I, I've worked for a large variety of, of projects and, and companies. Uh, and it's sort of, I would say like, like anything in land surveying is what you make of it. So you kind of can sort of pick your destiny and find the right fit for you. And in BC, you know, there's some of the biggest players in the survey and engineering world and as well as you know anything from to like a sole proprietor so there's everything in between uh, you can work in the big city or remote places and at the moment there's a huge demand for skilled labor um, and there's a rich history of land surveying in bc and and the one thing i've found in general is that the network of professionals is quite supportive uh, and so you know like you can always reach out and and ask questions you know, if there's something that you're not quite familiar with, there's always someone that knows that's willing to help. And now onto a little bit about the GR radar group. So these are the mission statements of GR radar, the two divisions of GR radar group. Geoscan, which is what I, a Geoscan land survey falls under an X radar. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the both of them here. So between the two companies, there's a wide range of services. Um, we operate out of BC, Ontario, Quebec, and Nova Scotia. And like I said, the, the land survey department at the moment, there's only two offices that being Burnaby and Victoria. But you know, like the thing that ties all these different services together is that there's spatial data. And, and really that's where the land survey department comes in. And as you can see with all these services, a lot of our staff are involved in multiple aspects of the business. We sort of encourage cross-training. Um, and so with all these services, we can kind of, we can essentially provide subsurface and terrestrial survey services from the beginning to an end of a project and then beyond, you know, during when buildings are getting changed and things. I'll tell you a little bit about these other services. So the underground utilities services are sort of make up a big chunk of that's geoscan subsurface surveys. Um, you know, in 10 years, they've grown to being one of the biggest uh, and leading providers of utility locating. And uh, geophysical engineering surveys, geophysical surveys in Canada. Um, 
They're professionals in the utility locating field and through associations are leading the way for higher industry standards and improved regulation. Our team has an extensive experience in technology such as ground penetrating radar and electromagnetic detection, which are used for utility locating. And I should add, we, you know, as a group, we are certainly pushing for more regulation in this industry, which is going to require people practicing the utility locating to have, you know, minimum sort of education and, and uh, minimum training. Uh, and that's again, where the role of uh, engineering tech comes in. So some, one, the other thing that we do quite a bit of is geophysics. Um, in geophysics, we collect data on the surface and try to understand how it can be translated to actual subsurface conditions. Uh, technically, we don't see beneath the surface, but we can measure certain properties of the subsurface that result in a better understanding of the materials beneath. For example, we can measure the magnetic field close to the ground and near the surface to detect ferromagnetic objects and then analyze the data set, we can find out even more about that area. So, you know, they can detect uh, different archeological features like trenches and human caused signatures, settlements, housing. Uh, with ground penetrating radar, we can map out large areas, measure other material property variations, map, map out cavities, buried objects, changes in geology and that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we've been involved in recently is sort of mapping out uh, burial sites and that sort of thing. So uh, there's a huge range of applications for the uh, services and technology that we use. Um, another, another thing that we are heavily involved in is uh, what's called concrete scanning. And so you can see here in one of the photos, um, all those conduits and things that are going to be in the concrete after it's poured. And later on, the concrete is poured and a new tenant comes in and they want to say, connect into one of these lines or they want to drill a hole so that they can get to something through the bottom floor. Well, there's potential to strike any one of these things. And so what our group does is uses technology that sort of been developed in house to better map um, the different aspects and things that are under the slab so that they can determine safe sites for, for, um, for cutting. And often our data is given to, you know, some structural engineer to make determinations on how best to proceed. But in addition to this, we've also uh, developed this technology. So, um, I'm just going to run this. It's going to pop over here. So using laser scanning, we collect this data and uh, we provide a platform that uh, clients can use to essentially, you know, go in here and and uh, be able to do a walkthrough. But more importantly, this all is related to the building plans and our clients are able to approximate measurements from different features uh, to, to kind of get a bit of an idea of whether there might be any conflicts um, before they start to do any work. Of course, when concrete is poured, some of these things shift. So concrete scanning is still required, but having this information kind of can give a huge head start uh, as far as, you know, determining potential hazards before, before you even start design. So I'll tell you now a little bit about the formation of Geoscan Land Surveying. So this, this division launched, launched actually just over a year ago on March 1st, uh, 2021. Um, the idea of this was, like I said, that all the data that we collect at the moment was the spatial data, but there was never really a, a, a good way of, uh, of connecting all that data. And I think this sort of touches on what uh, Andrew and I were speaking about before the presentation that, you know, the, the quality of the data is improving. Um, and we want to sort of take the jump from this good enough surveys to 
something that can be more relied upon and actually relates the data to something useful. So in this case, uh, it's parcel boundaries. So we can now actually provide information to the client for construction or whatever the case may be that's related to the parcel boundaries. And so I was a client of Geoscan for quite some time. I think I, when I started hiring them, must have been around 2012, 2013. And at the time there was only four employees. Now there's eight or 80 employees. Um, and what I was always impressed about is that, you know, in the world of subsurface locating, there's quite a range of, of providers and they always produce high quality, reliable data um, and excellent reporting and that sort of thing. And so we decided to combine forces so that we could uh, provide land survey services and all these other services in house. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you the actually interesting reason why this uh, photo of, of the white caps is, is in here. Um, I was a season ticket holder for the white caps um, for quite some time. And, you know, after spending a few years there, you make friends with the people around you. And as it turned out, it was one of the board members and actual original owners of the company was a, a season ticket holder that was also sitting two seats to my left. And so we got to know each other and built a relationship over the years. And so the reason I bring this up is, you know, like this, the land survey community is a small community within a, even, you know, another smaller community of construction and that sort of thing. And, and the reality is that, you know, regardless of where you are or what position you're in, you shouldn't look past it and always put your best foot forward and do the best you can, because ultimately those relationships and experiences will have either positive or negative effects on your career. And so what is an engineering tech's role within Geoscan? Well, as I say, you know, there's a lot of opportunity and I think it's the, the, the career and job is what you make of it because we offer all sorts of um, training opportunities and cross training so you can kind of work through the various departments and one thing that we really emphasize a lot is innovation and we allow our staff and encourage our staff to to give feedback and to to give info uh, and, and maybe, you know, think outside the box and, you know, we're always willing to try new things and 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 a lot of the new I, new and great ideas come from our staff. You know, there's opportunity to become a, a BCLS, uh, you could article under me. Um, we also provide training as, as a RULT. Uh, RULT is a professional designation created to recognize the experience and key competencies of utility locators who work in various industries. RULT technicians provide invaluable support to the ground disturbance community. Those competencies are established by ASTTBC policy and demonstrate that qualified practitioners can deliver an enhanced level of practice to ensure public safety. And I think just going back to something that we had talked about earlier, we're really pushing for higher industry standards. Um, ourselves and other companies are involved in that. Uh, we're pushing for regulation for subsurface utility mapping and surveys to be taken under the umbrella of the engineering associations, as well as potentially by the land survey associations of a given province. So as time goes on and this, this industry becomes more and more formalized, you know, having an education like yourselves is a, is a great asset and would be valuable for any sort of company involved in this industry. And so if you are an employee, what can GR radar group do for you? Um, there's, a, like I said, a lot of opportunity for career growth. Um, we're constantly looking to expand and, and again, give opportunity to our, to our staff in that. Um, we, we give competitive wages and benefits package. There's also, um, as of last year, we're hundred percent employee owned and, and after, depending on your role and amount of time you're 
given the opportunity to buy shares in the company. Uh, there's all sorts of staff trips. Last year, we did a three-day trip to Whistler during the mountain bike season. So we all went biking, or those of us that were into biking went biking. Other people did you know, different events, golfing or whatnot. And uh, there's, you know, socials during during the rest of the uh, work week where we go out for go-karting or mini golf or that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, other than that, I think the benefit is just the the support and the the sort of great community of people that we have in the company. Um, it's a really good, encouraging place to work and very supportive 